Harry's wife, 91.28. So compatible. Many of you listening have been involved with narcissists. There are those also of you listening who may not have been, or quite possibly you have without realising it. Nevertheless, it's important to understand that nobody spots us the first time around. Why? They don't know what a narcissist is, or even if they do, they fall into the trap of believing it's some kind of Patrick Bateman, self-obsessed, mirror-flexing, prostitute-shagging, drug-snorting, egomaniac, who is just who only cares about how good he looks and how many women he bangs. Of course, as you know from my extensive catalogue of work, there are many different shades of narcissist. Accordingly, many people are unfamiliar with the concept of the narcissist or have a very narrow view of what one is. And when the narcissist presents, he or she, of course, does so, guided by the narcissism to fit in. We don't turn up with a neon sign above our heads going, Hello, I'm a narcissist, can I abuse you? If we did, you would, of course, run away from us, which would affect our control. And that is why, dependent on the type of narcissist that you have the misfortune to be involved with, some narcissists merely tone down the dark side, others lay it on thick with the love bombing that you may well be familiar with, flattering you, complimenting you, taking you to lovely places, being supportive, appearing, appearing to be compassionate, appearing to take an interest in you, mirroring your thoughts, interests and desires, so that we appear like a completely compatible soulmate and utterly desirable for you. Nobody spots us when we first come along because they're unfamiliar with the behaviour of the narcissist. And furthermore, even if they spot certain behaviours which they think are problematic, they don't act on them because of their presence of their emotional thinking that blinds them. Therefore, the incessant texting, the monopolization of time, the bribery through the gifts, all passes undetected. The fact that we want you with us all of the time, stopping you from doing things with other people, is ignored because you're given such a wonderful time when you are with us. Therefore, it's important for people to recognize what the narcissist is and, of course, to realize the dynamic. And there is so much material out there which euphemizes the narcissistic dynamic. I've spoken elsewhere about the twin flames dynamic, which is actually the narcissistic dynamic, dressed up in something romantic. And this misleads people. I've explained elsewhere, in No Good Advice, about how many people who are supposedly relationship gurus fail to spot the narcissistic dynamic between narcissist and victim and instead spend their time with such things as try and do more things together, just love him more, or let him go and he'll come back to you if it's meant to be. All ridiculous advice, and I've seen many times where somebody has written about their circumstances on a problem page, for instance, and it's quite clear that they're in the grip of the narcissist, but the so-called relationship counsellor or guru completely fails to pick this up. And it's because of matters such as this next article, which talk about the idea of compatibility. It is plain to see, and I've made it very clear through my expert analysis of the various pieces of evidence that have been put before us over the last few years, that Harry is the victim of a narcissist. Yet, the Express, by an article from Rebecca Miller, tells us as follows. Plain to see, compatibility expert on sensitive Harry's wife and reliable Harry's love match. The only thing that Harry's wife is sensitive to is a threat to her control. She has cognitive empathy, but no genuine emotional empathy. The article continues. Harry's wife and Prince Harry may not be official senior royals anymore, but having set up their family away from the British royal family, is their love going to last? A compatibility expert seems to think they are meant for one another. Harry's wife and Prince Harry first met on a blind date in July 2016, and after several years dating, they got married in 2018. Together, the couple have gone on to have two children, Archie, two, and Lilibet, six months. But now, but how compatible are the couple? 
Express.co.uk spoke to compatibility expert, whatever the fuck one of those is, and astrologer Inbal Hollingman, who studied Harry's wife and Harry's birthday and zodiac signs to give a reading. Harry's wife's birthday is August the 4th, 1981, while Prince Harry's birthday is September the 15th, 1984. Inbal said, Prince Harry has developed a reputation as the rogue royal, the outsider, the one who struggles to toe the line. But I disagree with that analysis wholeheartedly, having looked at his star chart. He was born under the sign of Virgo, which is the most organised. Well, I suppose he can put his crayons in order of colour, starting with lightest, moving through to darkest, so she might be onto something. Logical and sensible. Hmm. Sign in the zodiac. So far, I don't really think that those are descriptions that applies to Harry, but let's forge on. Furthermore, he is what we'd call a triple Earth, because all his three main signs, his sun sign, known as the star sign, his moon sign, and his ascendant, also known as rising sign, are all in Earth signs. Ever so complicated, isn't it? She continued, with a Virgo sun, Taurus moon, and Capricorn ascendant, this prince knows exactly what he's doing. Actually, he doesn't. He doesn't know what he's doing, because he's guided by his emotional thinking. He thinks he knows what he's doing, but he doesn't know that he's ensnared by a narcissist. It's very clear that that's the case, and therefore to suggest that he knows exactly what he's doing is wrong. The article continues, he's put a lot of thought into his every move. No, he's ruled by his head, not his heart. Wrong. He's planned his life meticulously, absolutely incorrect, and has made his choices, indeed and is not ever likely to change his mind or apologise to anyone for his life choices. Well, that might alter, as a consequence, of course, of intervention when emotional thinking is reduced, perhaps when he's disengaged from. If you want to understand what I see as the likely outcome between Harry's wife and Harry, as many of you have asked, just search for my videos about the future, and I go into detail there. The article continues, Each one of his transitions in life, Military, partying, marriage, moving, has been the result of hours of planning and scrutinising. Mm. Somehow I think getting the pink pancakes out in Las Vegas wasn't something that involved meticulous planning. Also, with the moving, that wasn't down to him. He was yanked on his chain by his handler, Harry's wife. Virgos are always meticulous and direct. Yes, he always looks meticulous, doesn't he? Looking like he's been dragged through a hedge backwards as of late. What seems illogical and even temperamental to the outside observer makes perfect sense in the Virgo's mind. Well, by the presence of emotional thinking, that may well be accurate. But the Virgo won't care, Imbal added. His beautiful wife is a Leo and his exact opposite. Leos are strong and proud. They will easily rise over adversity because even though sensitive and easy to crumble on the inside, they are fearless and passionate and stand up to challenges on the outside. I suppose this has a degree of applicability because it could be argued that Harry's wife, with her need for control and so easily wounded, would crumble easily on the inside, but ex on the external presents this proud, fearless, passionate individual that stands up to challenges, i.e. threats to control. Their pride is a source of grief. Because many people don't like Leos for that. But it's their most defining characteristic, and so with typical dignity, they carry on. The expert said, Interestingly, all of Princess Harry's wife's, when did she become a princess? Main placements are very sensitive. Her Leo son means you feel hurt when criticised. Well, most people do feel hurt when they're criticised, so that's nothing new. But of course, she feels a different sensation because of the effect of the wounding. A sensation of plummeting as those fuel levels drop. A sense of the chasm and the abyss reaching up to get her. Her Libra moon tells us how shocked she is when people don't side with her. Again, she's shocked because of the delusion through which she operates. Nothing to do with her Libra moon. And most tellingly, her cancer rising means she makes her decisions using her heart, not her head. Her decisions are made by her narcissism. The dynamic between these two, astrologically speaking, is plain to see. Well, the dynamic between the two is plain to see when viewed through the lens of narcissist and victim. The Duchess of Sussex will feel things, express them, share her emotions with her husband, but leave the decision up to him. Absolutely not the case. She's the handler. She is the doer. He is the done too. She is the controller. She is the controlled. That's the way it works with our kind. 
And he will make the decision using his logic, while taking her emotions into account, she continued. Harry isn't allowed to make decisions. They're compatible, but a lot of sensitivity is needed on his part, and a lot of patience required on hers. When looking at the chart of a lady so ruled by her heart, the question arises, how did she fall in love with such a sensible man? I don't think sensible is a word that's going to be regularly used when it comes to Harry. And the answer is right there in the stars. Her Venus sign, the sign that governs the heart and the home, is in Virgo. She was only ever going to set up home and raise children with a reliable, dependable Virgo, just like Prince Harry. Well, she's had a few bites of the cherry, hasn't it? With the purported first marriage and then one to Trevor Engelson. Third time's a charm, I guess. Once again, this article smacks of somebody sending some money to this so-called compatibility expert. I think possibly the bank transfer came from the Empress of Woke and the instruction, or through the PR agency, with the instruction of, well, you need to write something about the two being compatible to ensure that these rumours about Harry living in San Francisco and that she's in Montecchio are completely quashed to demonstrate that they are entirely compatible together. The fact is, there is no compatibility. She controls him through the narcissistic dynamic. She manipulates him. And this article is dangerous because it causes people to fail to see what's actually going on and causes them to believe or at least some people, to believe the kind of tat and trite nonsense that's advanced in this article has some meaning. It clouds the issue. It fails people to see that this is a dynamic between narcissist and victim. And it's my work that enables that to be seen so clearly. And by spreading my work, you'll be able to advise and educate yet more people about the behaviour of the narcissist using this prominent example of Harry's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.